Hi, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I will try to explain what the Nernst equation is and what it exactly describes in less than 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So the first thing that I would like to look into is a hypothetical cell. So inside this hypothetical cell, we have a plasma membrane, and this plasma membrane will separate two different fluid compartments. The first compartment is the intracellular fluid, or the ICF, and the second compartment is the ISF, or the interstitial fluid. The ICF is present inside the cell, and the ISF is present outside the cell. Now inside the cell, we only have one solute, and this solute is going to be potassium. And outside the cell, we also only have one solute, and this solute is going to be potassium as well. However, it is important to realize that the concentration of potassium inside the cell is much greater than the potassium concentration outside the cell. Inside the cell membrane, we also have a potassium channel. Now this potassium channel, when it is open, will allow potassium to flow through it. Now because potassium has a positive charge and therefore is a cation, the side with the most potassium will have the greatest positive charge. So in our hypothetical cell here, since the intracellular fluid has much more potassium than the interstitial fluid, the inside of the cell will have a relatively more positive charge than the outside of the cell. And this is because, once again, the potassium is positively charged, and since we have more potassium inside the cell than outside, the, outside of the, the inside of the cell is going to be positive, and the outside will be relatively negative. Now, when we open this potassium channel, what we will see is that there are going to be two gradients that are going to be determining the movement of potassium. The first gradient is going to be the concentration gradient. And the concentration gradient is going to favor the movement of potassium from inside the cell to the outside of the cell. And the concentration gradient is symbolized by the red arrow here. The second gradient that is going to be determining the potassium movement is going to be the electrical gradient. And in this case, we're looking at it from the point of view of positive charge. So what we see is that there is more positive charge on the inside of the cell than the outside of the cell. So therefore, the positive charge will repel the potassium from the inside of the cell to the outside. So therefore, you have both a concentration gradient and an electrical gradient favoring the movement of potassium outside the cell. Now, as we allow this cell to remain open, so as we allow this potassium channel to remain open, what we will see is that the two gradients will actually start to decrease. So what we'll tend to see is that the concentration gradient will tend to decrease. And the reason why is because if we keep this potassium channel open, more, more potassium will flow through, so therefore the concentration gradient will decrease. The second thing that will decrease is that positive charge inside the cell. So as we move positive charges from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, we are basically taking positive charge from the inside to the outside, and as a result, building negative charges on the inside of the cell. So therefore, we're decreasing the positive charge of the cell as potassium is moving out. So therefore, these two gradients are decreasing, and the movement of potassium from inside to outside will be slowing. Now, after a certain length of time, the cell will reach a state of equilibrium. And equil equilibrium is defined as the state in which the movement of potassium out of the cell is going to equal the amount of potassium moving into the cell. So I want to talk more about this equilibrium with an example. So we can imagine the cell as a house. And inside this house, we have a bunch of stuff that we want to move out of it. This stuff is going to be the potassium. Now this potassium is extremely heavy. So therefore, in order to move this potassium out of the cell into the outside, we have to get workers. And the first worker that we're going to recruit is the concentration gradient. And this concentration gradient is symbolized by this red stick figure. And as you see here, the concentration gradient is going to push potassium from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. However, since potassium is such a heavy 
object, we need another person in order to help the concentration gradient. And this person that we're going to recruit is the positive charge inside the cell. So the positive charge inside the cell will aid the concentration gradient in moving the potassium from the inside of the cell to the outside. And when we first open that potassium channel, these two guys are going to be extremely strong. And the reason why they're going to be extremely strong is because the cell has been closed for a, a, for a large majority of the time. So therefore, you can imagine that the concentration gradient and the positive charge inside the cell will be really large. And we can correlate this to the two workers. The two workers haven't started working yet, so therefore they're going to be well rested, well fed, and ready to work. So therefore, the concentration gradient and the positive charge will move that potassium out of the cell very easily. Now, as these two workers continue to move potassium outside of the cell, they will start to get tired and weaker. So therefore, they will start to shrink. And now let's imagine that there's a bad guy inside the cell. And this bad guy is called negative charge. Now, the reason why we have this negative charge coming in is due to the fact that as we keep moving potassium out of the cell, we're moving positive charges out of the cell. And when we move positive charges out of the cell, negative charges will start to take its place. So therefore, negative charge will start building up inside the cell and opposing the outward potassium movement. So therefore, as these two workers move the potassium outside of the cell, what we'll see is that this negative charge will start opposing them and try to pull it back into the cell. So therefore, what we'll see is that these workers will have a much harder time pushing that potassium outside of the cell due to the fact that they're weaker and now you have this negative charge working against them. Eventually, these two workers get so tired and so small that they can no longer push this potassium effectively. And the negative charge starts to get so large that it basically opposes their movement altogether. So as a result, what we see with increasing lengths of time is that the cell will reach a state of equilibrium, where the movement of potassium out will equal the movement of potassium going into the cell. And this is because the concentration gradient has decreased, the positive charge has decreased, and the negative charge has increased. So therefore, we can now bring this back into the cell and look at it in terms of the cell. So inside the cell here, we are looking at it when it's at equilibrium. And what we see here is that at equilibrium, the concentration gradient, which is moving potassium from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, has decreased in magnitude. And what we see is that the voltage gradient, which is moving against it, which is due to that negative charge buildup, which we see here, is moving, is moving against that concentration gradient. And it's when, these, it's when the concentration gradient pushing potassium out of the cell equals the voltage gradient pushing potassium into the cell are equal to each other when the cell reaches equilibrium. And it's this point of equilibrium that the Nernst equation describes. So the Nernst equation is going to describe how the concentration gradient and how the voltage gradient come into play during equilibrium. This right here is the Nernst equation, and what it basically calculates is the equilibrium potential. And the equilibrium potential of an ion, which is given by E uh, subscript X, is basically defined as the cell membrane potential at which an ion reaches equilibrium. And we can calculate the equilibrium potential from the Nernst equation by knowing the charge of that ion, which is shown here, and the concentration of that ion inside the cell and outside the cell. And when you plug in those numbers, you can calculate the equilibrium potential. So that is what the Nernst equation describes. And I hope this video helps you to have a better understanding of what the Nernst equation is trying to describe. I hope to see you next time and stay smart, everyone.